Hello to all my friends. So glad that you're with me today. I'm going to be with you for just a couple of moments, talk to you a little bit about endurance. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we would call patience or being consistent in who we are and what we believe. So just those of you that uh, join in with me, take just a couple of moments. It's a great time for a coffee break. It's a great time to just sit down and uh, shut everything else down for just a couple of moments and visit with me. I really believe that this is, this is good for you. I think I've got something that can make an impact on your life. I just want to welcome you and uh, just, just uh, say that I, I'm very glad that I have this opportunity to be with you. You know, my desire to talk today concerning the endurance of life, the remaining consistent is, is very important. I, I, I really believe it's essential now because it makes the difference between those that are going to go forward and those that are not. And the decision is really yours. It's not God's. It's not everybody else's. It's yours as to what you do with what you face. That's kind of what I want to talk to you about. That, uh, uh, just get a little housekeeping out of the way here is April 2nd. <laughs> Can you believe it? April 2nd. It's my birthday today. It's a kind of a, kind of a sobering thought after a while. You know, I remember when I was, I remember when I was 16. I, I remember that. I remember I remember turning 21, you know, there were key, key points in my life where I moved along in life and it's almost as though it didn't mean anything. But as I get, as I get older, as I <clears throat> face this season of my life, it's a, it's a reality of the value of my stewardship, uh, how important it is what I'm doing and that no longer am I counting years, I'm counting moments. I'm not just trying to make years valuable, I'm trying to be present in the moment to make this moment valuable. See, reality doesn't exist any place except right now. You, you are in the realm of what we would call reality right now. It doesn't exist in the past, that's called memories. It doesn't exist in the future because that hasn't happened yet. There's only one place it exists, and that's right now. And the question is, what do you want to do with what you've been given? Because you are certainly the steward over all of this, and you're going to have to make the decision. And uh, I have an old friend. Now, he's going on to be with the Lord now back a number of years ago. But many years ago, he spoke to me, and he said, just do the math. I'm not going to be here forever. <laughs> And I, of course, my thought was, well, if we're doing math, none of us are going to be here forever. But the fact is, is it was a real challenge. It was a real call to evaluate what I'm doing right now, not what I've done before. That was wonderful. Not what I'm going to do someday. That's going to be great. But what am I doing right now? What am I doing right now with the challenges that I'm facing, the disappointments that I have <clears throat> The fears that I encounter. You ever did you ever encounter fear? I know you have. You know, right now we're still in the process of dealing with this virus that is sweeping the nation. They're predicting uh, hundreds of thousands of people to die from this from this flu type virus, and it's frightening. It's frightening for families. You know, maybe it's not frightening for you, but those that have family members that are legitimately going through this and are at risk, it's a concern. And we must not just diminish to throw it off as though it meant nothing, because it does mean something. But what we've got to do is we've got to confront it with the right attitude. We've got to confront it with with uh, courage. I, I went to the store the other day. I was actually in a in the hardware store. And I was in there going to pick up something. And I noticed something that was very strange to me. Um, nobody would look at me. And it's not just me. They weren't looking at each other. It was almost a detachment that felt very strange. I'm not saying that people were being rude, but it was almost, I, you could see it. It was almost a, a tangible fear that people 
were going about their day, going through the hustle and the bustle, but you know, we're keeping our distance between one another, but but it was creating an, an attitude that I don't think was good. And we cannot face what we face, we cannot face danger and fear by shrinking back from it. We've got to face it with strength. We've got to face it with knowing who we are and what we're going to do. Let me just tell you something. <clears throat> we're gonna get through this. Now, a lot of families, they may know someone that didn't. And unfortunately, that's, that's the sad part of life, almost a cruel aspect of life. I, I, I don't have good answers to give people at that time. I can't necessarily give them a bunch of words. It's not the ministry of theology that you give people at that time. Sometimes it's just the ministry of presence. Sometimes when people are going through things, all you can do is just be there for them. But, but I, I noticed that there was a tendency in people to draw back from one another. And I just say that because I want, I want to say to you that it, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel healthy. And we must be brave and courageous about everything that's in our life. It's not just one thing. It's everything. You, you've, got to, you've got to make the decision that you're going to approach your future with optimism, with strength, with an attitude, with an attitude that says, no matter what happens, we're going to get through and we're going to move forward. See, our children and our grandchildren, they need that. They don't need us hiding in holes. They need us to be brave. And I assure you, there are some very, very smart people that's working on these problems and uh, I thank God for them. And they're doing everything they know. A lot of people are working around the clock and uh, they're, they're fixing things up. I know there's a lot of doom and gloom. I know there's a lot of, you know, navel gazing, but I wanna say this to you. We're gonna get through this and we're gonna be strong and we're gonna be powerful and we're gonna have hope and we're gonna have a message of strength that we carry. And you make the decision that that's where you're going. You can't afford to be afraid. You can't be helpful to anybody if you're afraid of them because you'll, you'll run and hide from them. So it's very important, <clears throat> the reality of life. Like I said, as I approach this season of my life, you know, it's, it's almost you look at your mortality and uh, everybody looks at the mortality, you know, they just think, well, <sighs> <laughs> because it's, it's a reality. The, the mortality of our life is, is a reality. Uh, in this season, in this dimension of time, of space that God has placed us in, this is the way it is. And you have to make that decision how you're going to approach it. And it's got to be with courage. Listen to me. You're going to have to be courageous with what you're facing. And if you'll do that, you'll find that you'll get through it with very little, if any, scrapes and bumps and bumps. I'm not saying that sometimes we don't take a hit. Sometimes we don't go through things that we don't understand. But I want to say it's important that we, and especially we as believers, that we actually act like the Bible is true. Now, wouldn't that be a new concept? <laughs> you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually act like the Bible is true. And, and I'm going to approach part of my life, the things that I'm facing, whether this or whether this, I'm going to approach it with faith. I'm going to approach it with confidence. I'm going to approach it with a foundation of the Word of God that tells me who I am and what God's thoughts are concerning what I'm facing. That's going to be my declaration. That's going to be my, that's going to be my, my statement of faith, uh, my affirmations. I'm going to be I'm going to be speaking what God said about me in the midst of the things that I'm going through. And it doesn't matter. You know, the fact is, is if your mortality is showing, if you, I won't say don't be afraid. There's very many important things that God has for us. And let me just say this. I believe this with all my heart, that God is not through with you yet. He's not done with you. And we've got to, we've got to, gird ourselves. We've got to, as, as the Bible said, 
uh, and, and Samuel, it said we, we must um, pull ourselves together, quit ye like men and be strong. That was what one army said that when they were fearful, the captain stood up and he said, quit like men. And he didn't mean quit like quit, but he said, pull yourself together like a man, be strong. And that's what we've got to do. And so regardless of what you're facing, you be strong today. We've got too much to do. There's, there's too much. There's too much riding on us. There's too much depending on us. We are fathers. We are, fathers. We are parents. We are leaders. We've got to stand up and take our place. And I, I just challenge you to join with me and to be strong in this army that uh, you're, not going to, you're not going to shake because the wind blows against you. You're not going to, you're not going to um, hesitate. You're not going to draw back, but you're going to be strong. Because when people draw back, that's when they lose their footing. That's when they lose their identity. That's when they forget why they're doing what they're doing. But this is the time that I want to tell you, this is who we are, and this is where we're going. I tell my kids that. I've, I've mentioned that when our family face things that seem uncertain. I would say to them, this is who we are, and this is where we're going. They need to know that. And so it's important that you speak that out and that you declare it. Sometimes you might have to say it out loud where you can hear it. Yeah, there's been times I'd start my day off, and it was a rough day, but I'd start my day off, and I'd make the declaration with a little bit of attitude, this is going to be a great day today. This is going to be a great day. So sometimes I say it because I want someone else to hear me. Sometimes I say it because I want life to hear me. And sometimes I say it because I need to hear it. So this is going to be a great day. We're going to stand up and we're going to take our place and we're going to take our position. Now, this is where the, the thoughts about <clears throat> perseverance, about patience comes in. You know, patience, that's an interesting word. I don't know if you've ever done any study on this, but there is, a, there is legitimately a force of patience, part of the fruit of the Spirit. It works in your life. It's not something you're going to get. It's something you have. You know, it's, it's not like, God, give me patience. It doesn't work like that. Patience is already in you. What happens is, is when time, patience that is already on the inside of you goes to work. It's the soldier on guard that protects or defends the city. Now, what city are you talking about? Your mind, your will, your emotions. I've got to have that soldier to protect my mind that when things look wrong, that my mind doesn't go crazy. You know, there's a Bible in Corinthians that made the statement, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now that is the perfect description of what the force of patience does. The force of patience works in your life when things are going wrong. Uh, you don't get more patience. Tribulation works patience. I've heard people say, don't pray for patience or things will get bad. That's not what the Bible said. And I don't know where in the world people get these things. They, they take these, these little statements and pull them out and create some doctrine that isn't even real. It doesn't say that when you pray for patience, things are going to get bad. It says that when things get bad, patience goes to work. It says tribulation worketh patience. And what does patience do? It battles against things that tells you you're going to go down, you're going to fail, you're going to die. You're going, it's not going to be long until it's over for you and there's no, and, and when those voices come, the flu is right around the corner. The economy is terrible. People don't like you. Uh, you know, you're a failure going someplace to happen. You can't make in, you know, all of these thoughts that come every time something goes wrong, they come in your mind. See, that's where it starts. The downfall of the direction of your life happens and starts with a thought. You feed your spirit with a thought 
and it, it begins to set the trajectory for your life. And it's undergirded by words that you say. It's empowered. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart flow the issues of life. It comes out of your heart, but it's released with words. And it takes those thoughts that come and makes them a reality in your life. And so what patience does, patience casts down imaginations. Now, I don't know about you. I've got an amazing imagination. Some people know that more than others. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, indeed. But I've got an imagination. And when I see something going wrong, it wouldn't take long for me to figure. I mean, that's, that's almost like, <laughs> do, you, do, you ever have a, do you ever have a toe ache and in about 30 minutes you're convinced you have cancer? <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying. You have something go wrong that you don't know and immediately your mind, your imagination will take that and it'll make it into some horrible, threatening disease. If you don't get a hold on that, I'm just telling you something. It'll take you someplace that you don't want to go. It'll, it, it, it's important that you guard your heart because the forces of life come out of there and bring those imaginations to pass. It's the truth. And so what you've got to do is cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against what God has said about you. Now, that's very important for you to understand that. I mean, we, we need to understand that. That's patience at work. A man who is strong in patience will stand things when it comes against him. A man weak in patience, it'll run over him and leave tire tracks over his head. That's a person who's weak in patience. But a person who's strong in patience, they stand up and say, but this is what God said about me. I don't care what I see. I'm strong in patience. I'm unmoved. The garrison of my mind, the soldier on guard that protects and defends the city is at work and he is cutting through every false piece of information that's ever been thrown at my life. I mean, it's really important part of your life. You remember when the Bible said, in your patience, you possess your souls? Well, see, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, isn't it interesting that he said, in your patience, you will possess, you will, you will gain ownership, control, you'll steer the car this way, or you'll steal, you steer the car this way. See, you possess your soul, you're in ownership, you're in control. That's what it means to possess. Now, to understand that context, you have to look at the chapter that that verse came out of. In that chapter, he was talking about tribulation that was so severe that people were running to the mountains to hide, that people were killing themselves. Tribulation so fear that people were perishing and dying, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you know what I'm saying. And right in the middle of that, he made this statement. Patience, you possess your soul. Now, what that was saying is, no matter how bad things look outside you, Patience will keep you from losing your mind when things are going wrong around you, when there's a virus out, when there's sickness out, when there's this problem, when there's danger, when there's fear, when it looks like we're not going to make it. What keeps me from losing my mind is that my soul, I'm maintaining possession and control through the force of patience. That's, that's why it is so very, it brings every thought that I have to obedience, every single one of them. And I think that's very important for your life that you understand the value of that. Now see, when it talks about faith and patience, see faith is, you're looking at two different things. Faith leaves you. Faith is born in the heart from the word of God. And here's how, here's how that happens. The word of God, the seed of God's word, goes into your recreated human spirit. And between your heart and the word of God, a baby is born called faith. Something is birthed from the word of God that is put in your heart. Faith is born, and faith doesn't stay with you but faith goes to the mountain. Your words become the vehicles that carry your faith from your heart to the mountain. Now, 
Faith doesn't stay with you. It goes someplace. It goes to do something. That's the nature of it. But the, but the nature of patience, it stays at home. And it guards the mind, the will, and the emotions while faith is going to do something. Because sometimes you believe God for something and you don't see any results. You, I ain't seeing anything, man. It don't look like anything has changed. And I'm just going to tell you something. When it looks like that, it's very easy to lose heart. It is. You can lose heart and you get to the place you're thinking, dear Lord, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this didn't work. But see, patience comes to work right there and it says, wait, wait just a minute. God's word, you're not going to go down. You're going to be all right. It, it casts down the imaginations. It's, it, it identifies those false thoughts, uh, that fake news. It identifies that stuff and cast it down so that your, your, your faith can stay at work. Because what a lot of times happen, people release their faith to the mountain, and when they don't see any results, they just close the door on it. They don't feed it anymore. They don't, they don't uh, water it anymore. They just close the door and starves it out. And a lot of faith journeys ended just that way, but it didn't have to end that way because they were strong in faith, but they were weak in patience. You understand? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of verses. I wrote down several verses here that I think is, is really applicable if I, could, if I can make this thing work. Um, here's what it says. And, and I want you to notice in these scriptures, I'll, it'll show you in every single one of these how tribulation was at work on this hand and patience came in to work here. How many times you see patience is listed with persecution because persecution comes, problems come, difficulties come, and tribulation works patience to go to work to break down that thing, to sustain you until you walk through that thing victorious. Let me let me just give you um uh, let me just give you a couple of scriptures. Hebrews 6. Not, don't be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. That's a great word right there. They, they received the promises of God, not just by faith, which went to the mountain, but patience at home and kept their mind from going crazy. James 1.3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Tribulation, it worketh patience. The trying of your faith, it makes it go to work. When things get uncertain, patience goes to work, screaming at the top of its voice, saying, we're going to make it. Pay no attention to that over there. We're going to get, that. that's the way patience, that's the nature of it. Second Thessalonians 1, 4, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith, in all the persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So you notice there how faith and patience was connected to tribulations because that was the work that was being done when times got difficult. 2 Corinthians 6, 4. But in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. Okay, afflictions, necessities, distresses. And what does he say he, he undergirds that with? He said, we have proven that we are ministers in much patience in afflictions, necessities, and distresses. Romans 5, 3 and 4 says this, not only so, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. It makes it go to work. Tribulation sets it in gear. It works patience. And then patience does a work. It brings experience. I've been here before. And experience hope. I can do it again. See what it does? Patience girds up your mind. It affirms who you are and it doesn't let you fall. Let me just quick just a couple more. Uh, Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait. Now, okay, 
Look at this. If we're hoping for something, if we're, have you ever prayed for something and nothing to happen? Surely I'm not the only person that ever experienced that. I prayed for something and crickets. I'm thinking, <laughs> what, 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 what? I mean, I'm seeing no movement. But he said, if we hope, so you hope for something that you haven't seen yet. So if we hope for what we see not, then do we, with patience, wait for it. I'm waiting for it, letting the force of patience go to work, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ. Wow, isn't that awesome? I, let me just, just a couple more. Can, can you give me just a couple more minutes here? 10, 35, and 36. Cast away your confidence, your trust, your confidence, my belief. Don't cast away the foundation on which you stand in relationship to God and to who he is and what he promised you. He said, don't cast away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. It will produce for you. But here's what he said, verse 36, for you have need of patience or being consistent, being firm. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you've done everything, and you stand, therefore, that you might receive the promise. Powerful. You need to look that up on your own. Spend some time on that. Um, we go Luke 21, 19. You remember this one? In your patience possess ye your souls. And look at the context of that whole chapter. He's talking about tribulation so severe. And boom, right in the middle of it, he's saying, your mind, your will, your emotions will be stabilized and kept by this wonderful, incredible force of patience that God gave you. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And look at this. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, you've got a job to do. Don't stop. Don't even slow down. But run this race, letting patience keep you in order while you're running this race. Because I'm just telling you something. There's all kinds of things while you're running your race that tries to sideline you. So he said, he said there, let us run with patience this race that's set before us. James 1, 4, but let patience have her perfect work. Now, what is the perfect work? Well, the perfect there would be more, let patience do its completed work. Let it complete what it's, what it's doing because it's a, it's a uh, evolution. It's a process that patience does. It does a work in you. It comes in. It stabilizes you. It strengthens you. So he said, let patience do that. Let it have its perfect work. For what reason? Because when it finishes, it says you'll be perfect, you'll be complete, and entire, wanting nothing. See, that's, that's the work that patience will do. It'll stabilize you to the point that you are complete and that you have a platform that all the resources, the blessings of God can come to you without you sabotaging it. That's why it's so important. Uh, a, a couple more. Uh, Luke 18, 15. But that which is on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word and bring forth fruit with patience. In other words, I'm bringing forth fruit with this soldier that is working in, in tandem with me as the word of God is growing in my heart, okay? Um, let me see here. Let me see if there's, if there's another one. I mean, there's, we, we, you, we, you could go on and on in this thing, and it's so important that you just see basically that, that patience isn't that thing that people have said. Well, if you pray for patience, trouble's going to come. That is not what it says. It says when trouble comes, something on the inside of me, that's part of the fruit of my life, of my spirit, the fruit of what God gave me, the force of patience. When things go wrong, patience goes to work defending, 
it is, it is, there is, let me see. I think I had a definition here. Let me pull this thing up if I can for just one second. Ah, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, the, 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 the Greek word for patience is H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. And here's what it means. It means cheerful, hopeful. In other words, when things, I remain cheerful, consistent, to stay under. That's what patience means, to stay under or behind, to remain, to undergo. Remember what I said about your faith leaves you, but patience stays behind. That's what patience does. It, to stay, this is the definition, to undergo, to bear trials, to have fortitude, to persevere, to abide, to be. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How incredible is this wonderful thing called patience. Now, I'm just telling you right now that the things that you're going through, when you remain patient, when you let patience have its perfect work, I don't care what will take place around you, your countenance doesn't change. You ever see somebody that they're up like this when everything is good, they're down like this when everything is bad. You can see when they walk in the door whether or not you even want to have a conversation with them. Uh, I mean, it literally, it's that, it's that, they're that trans. But when someone is strong in patience, their countenance doesn't change. They have kind of like a poker face. <laughs> they're not collapsing every time somebody gives them a little bit of bad news. They know what the word has said, and they're going to keep the mind from going crazy on them. You need this during this time. People don't need to see you collapse. They need to see you put out hope. They don't need to see you running around with your hair on fire. They need you to stand strong and make the declaration, what did God say about this? I know, I know what they say out there in the community. I know what doctors say, but what does God say? Come on, let's bring him into the to hear what God's got to say about this. And so this is the thing that is at work in you. And when you go out amongst the community, you don't have to be afraid of people. Now, I'm not saying be foolish. Please hear me. Wash your hands. But you, you should have learned that when you were three years old. You shouldn't have to. Don't sneeze on people. Don't cough on people. Those are just manners. Lord, if we have to talk about that, then we're, we're, we're way behind if, if we're having to go back and trace that. But the fact is, is people do things that's just simply not healthy for them. So, so do what's right, but don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Approach what you're going to approach with strength and with candor. Don't you draw back. Don't you hesitate. I'm telling you, the Lord is with you. And you've got something in you that is phenomenal. You don't have to be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you something. Our best days are ahead of us. And we're going to see a lot of change take place over the next, over the next few days. I really believe that there are some, some men who are so smart. They're so smart. And they're working on this thing. They're working their hardest. Uh, and I want to say to you, don't fight against them. They're, they're not the devil. They're not. Now, there are some people that are the devil, and but, but we're not going to go there. But I'm just telling you, be a blessing to your community. Don't stress them out. There's nothing like knowing the church is over there, and dear God, they're going to stress us out because, you know, and because what it does, it just positions you to lose the value of your testimony. So you work with your community leaders. Now we've done this through several ways. Of course, I'm coming to you every day just like this. We have a Sunday morning taping and then we have a Saturday night parking lot. And we, we just set up our speakers and we have church people stay in their cars. And uh, it's, a, it's an incredible thing. We had a, an amazing time this last week. Wish you could have been there. And, uh, you know, this is important that you not unhook, but look for new ways to, to th think out of the box. Don't, don't just think if, 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 if that's the only thing that defines us is if we get to have church 
in a brick and mortar building and we can't be delayed a couple of weeks, then I wonder, are we all of that? Are we all that we've been telling everybody about? Let's, let's stand up and be part of this. Let's be looked at as a Daniel, someone who stood up and who, were, who was feared and honored and respected by everybody around them. And, and that's something that has to be earned. So, so do that, do that. Um, okay, I, I think I've probably gone long enough. Thank you so much for joining with me today. I, man, I appreciate this. This is such a wonderful time for me to get to be with you. Uh, I'm gonna try to respond to every one of you. Please leave a comment. Uh, it wouldn't hurt my feelings any if you pushed like. That would be nice. And you could also push share. I don't know where the challenge would be in that. It's just taking your finger and pushing share. <laughs> I've enjoyed being with you. I really have. Good things are ahead. I'm going to be back tomorrow. And uh, I've been celebrating this, this laid back birthday thing, uh, evaluating my days, uh, not wanting to miss a moment. Um, the moments are valuable. They're precious. They really are. I, I said something the other day. I said, even in sleep, because I, I sleep well. I, I do. But I don't want to spend my whole time sleeping. I don't want to miss every moment of my life. This is important to me. This is precious to me. And I pray that you'll just catch the moments that you have with one another, with your family, with whatever, is precious. And you should be alive every moment. Don't be absent during those times. Be alive, be connected. People need what you have. And I promise you, you have something incredible. But thank you for being with me. You can go to our website, fwcelgan.com. It gives you all the information concerning our church, how you can contact with me, our store, all the different things. Plus, we have our YouTube. Our YouTube has all of the all of the uh, <clears throat> programs that we put together, uh, and they've just been. You can just go back, and they're all dated, and they all have names. They can they can tell you, and I think it'll be good. This has been maybe a little longer today than I intended, but I really felt like I needed to talk to you about how this for life when you face challenges. You're, you don't need to flinch. You know, you don't need to flinch. You don't need, you don't need to hesitate. You don't need to draw back. You need to, your, your countenance should never change, whether it be good news or whether it be bad news. Because you've got a soldier on guard that's keeping your mind, your will, and your emotions stable while you go through the world. I want to pray. If you need somebody that'll be in prayer with you, if you've got a prayer request, I will, I will carry that before the Lord and I will be crying out to the Lord. He, he hears me when I pray. He does. And he does you too. But I just believe that when I pray, things happen. So send me your prayer request. Let me pray for you and believe God for you. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And uh, each day we're going to have a great time. Now let me just say Sunday morning, I'm going to be at 10 o'clock. You can, you can tune us in and we're going to be there on YouTube and on Facebook at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Please join me. I love you guys and I appreciate you more than I can say. Thank you for taking this time with me and uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. All right? So,